Hey, welcome to my office. Stu's here hanging out with me. It's kind of a cold, rainy day. I was hanging out down here getting ready for a business trip and uh, just looking at all my Mustang stuff and thinking about the 60th anniversary is coming up here in a couple of days. So it would be neat to share some of the stuff I've collected over the years. And so I've got a bunch of these old um, sales brochures. This is one of the first ones. This is the introduction of the Mustang. This one is, I got it at a resale shop and it's a little bit water stained. Um, but it's pretty cool stuff. And it came with this road and track article on the new Mustang that has some of the test driving road tests and specs and stats and, and whatever. So that's kind of cool. I picked that one up, obviously, like I said, at a resale shop. And I'm, I'm kind of glad to have found it. Um, this is another one that I would have probably picked up uh, somewhere at a resale shop. This is more of the stuff maybe you could get at dealers on, on everything from that era, uh, all the different cars but one of the things that's kind of cool and directly relates to me here is the Thunderbird it's not a Mustang related but um, this particular one here is like the one my grandfather bought new in 66 not the Landau top like this one it, it had the little back windows and they reminded me a lot of the Mustang I remember sitting in my dad's 66 Mustang looking back at this both of them in the driveway nose to nose thinking how much styling cues were shared between them. Anyway, when I was born, my parents brought me home from the hospital in my grandfather's 66 Thunderbird, and ultimately my mom got it, it was hers. So that's kind of neat. But anyway, another one of those cool brochure things from, from the early days. Now we jump ahead to not just when I'm collecting uh, stuff from a resale shop, but when I actually went and collected these myself. This is from 1981. In 1981, I got my first car. It was a 67 Mustang. Pretty rough. Um, I was 15. But I went to the Ford dealers a lot. Just the daydream. And I really liked the Fox bodies. And so I remember picking up stuff like this and, and daydreaming about them. And another thing that I did was I saved these for ads out of magazines, and I would hang them up in my back of my closet door or in my room somewhere. And this was one of my favorite ones, Boss is Back. Now this, again, 1982. I would have my driver's license in 1982. It was kind of neat because for a long time in the 70s, while I was my impressionable gearhead ages, Cars didn't have a lot of performance, right? I missed the muscle car era. So this was kind of the beginning of the new muscle car wars, which uh, we all know where that's led, right? So that was kind of cool. And, and I saved quite a few of them. This one is an 83 ad. And then I didn't know it at the time, but now this one's kind of special to me. This is the 84 Mustang anniversary anniversary special. Um, why this one's a, a bit special is my Uncle Joe um, knew I was into Mustangs, and uh, I was working at a hardware store after school uh, to pay for my insurance and gas and all that stuff on my 67. And uh, my uncle always had big cars, station wagons, LTDs, Galaxies, stuff like that. Um, and he had bought a new one. I don't even remember what it was. But he had taken it in to get undercoated, I think. And they gave him a loaner car, which happened to be one of these. And he came to where I was working and uh, waited for me to get off work. And then said, you know, I'd like to take you for a ride. And he took me out. And I, I never knew he could drive like that. It was a, I think they had four speeds in them then. Three speed, fourth was the overdrive. But manual. And uh, he took me out and just wowed me with the way he could drive, and I, I'll never forget that. 
Um, this is a 82 Lincoln one that I picked up, but mostly because of the, because of the Capri. At, at that time, the Fox body was shared the Mercury Capri. So the Mustang and the Capri were basically the same car. Um, so that's kind of early daydreaming. This actually comes to when I could actually afford to buy a car. I went in 1988 to this dealership to buy a Mustang GT. I was going to buy an 88 brand new. And uh, I, I decided on my own after weighing the, the cost and everything that uh, was just probably not a good idea. Um, so I ended up buying an 88 Ranger new, and I had that uh, until the day it got paid off. It got T-boned and totaled. But um, this brochure came from that time when I was actually going there to buy a Mustang GT. And uh, so I was definitely interested in them. In fact, it was this color combination of this exact car right here was the one I was going to buy. So that's kind of cool. Um, leap forward a few. In 1993, again, I got a call from, I think, the same salesman that I had bugged over the years. Um, he called and said, hey, I got a 93 Cobra sitting on the showroom floor, looked just like this one, wanted to know if I wanted to come drive it. Uh, this was near the end of the year, and I think they were trying to, to move it along. I actually financed it, got approved, went, uh, was ready to, I guess, leave with it, and uh, decided I'd call my insurance man, I think called him from the salesman's office, and to see what my insurance would be on a 93 Cobra. Again, I was still pretty young. It was way more than I imagined. And again, I decided, all right, I can't really justify owning this with the car payment and the um, insurance. And I had an 85 GT. It was my daily driver, five liter, five speed. I loved the car, but I didn't want to get rid of it either. Um, so I ended up buying a 94 Ranger, but that's, that's 93, 94. Um, again, I think I got this at the same time that I went to look at the 93 because the 94s were out. Um, so this is looking at, uh, all the 93 Fords, but it, it does include the new body style Mustang. Jump ahead. Um, in, uh, in 2005, well, it would have been 2004. My wife and I went to the Chicago Auto Show. I've gone there several times in the past with my dad. Uh, but they had the concept car for the uh, what was soon to be the 05 Mustang. And I remember telling my wife that if they make a real one, anything like the concept car, that we were going to buy one. And... Uh, so 2005 rolled around, sure enough, they made the 2005 Mustang, as everybody knows. Couldn't, couldn't get a GT or even really hardly any of them because they were just flying off the floor, sales floor, and the dealers were marking them up and everything. So calmed down around 2006. So I started going in 2006 to collect uh, information, and, and we got serious at looking at at the 2006 models uh, so this brochure would have been from from that and again i wanted a, a gt um i think you know we were both in agreement that you know, we would have loved to have one of those uh, but again 2006 just wasn't quite the right year I think we had recently moved, and so we we were just not quite ready. This is another small, smaller version of this that a good friend of mine gave me that we met on Power Tour. 
Uh, so, Jackie, if she watches my videos, she gave me this. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Um, but anyway, 2006 just didn't look like it was going to work for us. 2007, we really got serious. So again, went back. We were actually shopping for, why do I like this color? So we were shopping for that color, and um, we looked at a, a bunch of different Mustangs. Um, actually drove a few, I think. Obviously would have dreamed of, of this, but you could also get... Um, you could also get the Shelby GT, which... I'm not sure. This is California special. No, they don't show the Shelby GT specifically in here, but it, it would have come with all of these performance upgrades to me. You're probably familiar with them. Anyway, that was what we had decided on, a Shelby GT in this color. Um, but we made the decision at that time and really it was her decision. She said, why don't you get your 67 painted? Because it had been years uh, and it didn't just run around in primer. There was virtually no interior. It had seats in it, but no carpet. And the headliner had mouse holes in it and whatever. So she's like, why don't you get that painted? So we made the decision not to buy an 07 Mustang and we commissioned the car to get painted, and it did get painted in 2007. Um, 2010 rolls around, and they restyled the Mustang. Still an S197, but um, a lot of similarities. This, the 2010 still had the same 4-liter V6 as the earlier versions. Um, and the three valve four six v eight um, and of course, little did I know they were gonna have the coyote eventually uh, the next for next year or the three seven that they ultimately uh, came out with, but I like the styling, so I was still interested in those um, and I still. Went to the dealerships a lot. Here's a 2013. Um, the, some of these are just little things they would sit at the dealership. Uh, so, you know, you could grab them. They weren't like a full, full on uh, brochure, but I, I grabbed whatever I could. This is a 20, 2014 Mustang one. And again, by now, they had. The, uh, the Coyote was well known. They had even the V6 37 Cyclone, which was uh, quite the performance machine for a V6er. So, um, still, still wanted one, and, and I think I don't remember what year it was, but we did ultimately buy a used 2007, which you might see in some of my other videos, but. Here's a 2017 Shelby. Again, this would have been the S550 body, um, but really like those as well. Of course, never be able to afford a Shelby, just like I couldn't afford the the Cobra back in the day. Um, just out of my league. This has a 2018, like um, optional stuff. The different colors that you could get. Um, so some of the stuff that you could do, they call it, uh, steps to kick it up. So customizing made easy. Um, so that's the 2018. Then of course, 2020. Now this is significant a little bit because... Again, this is a Shelby GT350, but my son bought a brand new 2020 PP2. Much like the GT350, the, the PP2, PP2 just didn't have the 
uh, Voodoo engine that still had the Coyote, which is nothing wrong with that. Um, but anyway, that's those are the sales brochures I have for Mustangs. I've got a 67 one that I found in my dad's stash somewhere, uh, but it's with all my other 67 Mustang stuff. So that's just some neat Mustang memorabilia that I have. <laughs> he disappears behind my head sometimes and comes back, but he's here checking things out. So anyway, Stu and I want to thank you for watching and uh, have a good day.